This is Christina Fiore of MedPage Today. Physicians are generally calling the early results of the National Lung Screening Trial promising, yet they caution that it's certainly not a home run for screening high-risk patients. There are several caveats, as pointed out by researchers interviewed by MedPage Today and ABC News. Dr. Ned Patz of Duke University says the high numbers of false positives are among the top concerns. So I think the largest barrier at this time is really how to handle the large number of individuals who are enrolled in screening uh, programs, who are potentially enrolled in screening programs, who do not have lung cancer but have abnormalities which require further evaluation. This is a problem because in some of the studies in the Mayo Clinic and in the Japanese screening trials, they found that up to 30% of the so-called highly suspicious lesions, those abnormalities looking like lung cancer, those individuals went to uh, surgery and they proved to be benign. So a lot of patients will have unnecessary procedures and unnecessary imaging and even interventions for what's benign disease and if you'd never screened them, they never would have uh, actually been detected. Radiation dose may also be a concern as noted by Dr. James Urbanik of Wake Forest University. Yeah, there's always a concern um, in doing any radiation-based imaging or treatments about the long-term effects of radiation. Um, the one that we're always most concerned about is what's the risk of causing a cancer from the radiation treatments. Um, you know, based on the results that we have from this trial, um, you know, the incidence of lung cancer wasn't higher in, with this relatively short-term follow-up for those who were screened. Um, so although those risks are probably there, the incidence of lung cancer induced from the test itself is probably extraordinarily low. Um, but we'll need long-term results to really know um, if there's an issue there or not. Dr. Lee Green of the University of Michigan pointed out the mortality benefit may still be relatively low. 20% reduction isn't much. I mean, after all, 80% of the people didn't, 80% of the, uh, the people who would have died of, of lung cancer died anyway despite the screening pro, uh, program. That just reflects how serious a disease lung cancer is. And points out yet again what the, the people who wrote the study pointed out. This can help some people, but the real money is don't get lung cancer in the first place. Don't smoke, or if you smoke, quit. Now, for those who can't pull that off, if they get lung cancer, this gives them, if, if everything goes right, a one out of five chance, as opposed to, you know, what would happen otherwise. Researchers are also asking whether the monetary costs will be worth it, as Dr. Steven Swenson of the Mayo Clinic explains. We know that we don't have unlimited funds in this country for health care, and, we, we, and screening for lung cancer and the surgery is expensive, so we need, at least need to understand what it costs. And today, the vast majority of insurance companies and Medicare don't pay for screening for lung cancer. Now, we would expect that would be a change, changed after evaluation, but uh, so clinical practice, I expect will change, but we, we, we need to have the insurance companies and Medicare figure out uh, what makes sense for our country. One message is clear, says Dr. Martin Edelman of the University of Maryland. Patients shouldn't see this as a reason to continue smoking. I think that very importantly, one should realize that this is uh, not a reason to continue smoking uh, regardless uh, of the uh, availability of these results. Uh, first, uh, still a lot of patients still died of lung cancer on this study, uh, even amongst those who were screened. Um, there was a reduction in that number, but certainly not an elimination of the disease. Um, uh, the treatment for lung cancer uh, is uh, arduous, uh, again, no matter when it's found. Um, uh, at the very least, one is talking a uh, significant surgical procedure. Green offered some perspective on how these results may play out in practice. It's going to take some time to see how this really plays out in practice. Uh, things like this in medicine always go through an initial sort of surge of enthusiasm. And then people realize, uh, yeah, once that uh, got out there in the, in the world, it didn't work quite as well as it did in the lab. And then oftentimes there's a backlash saying, oh, this was a terrible idea. And then finally it settles down to a, an appreciation of its real place in, in treatment and what it's really worth and who it really should be used for and so forth. I think, you know, we're, we're at the initial flush of enthusiasm stage with this. We'll see how it plays out over the next couple of years as we get more experience with it and more data about it. 
Several groups, including the American Cancer Society and the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, will certainly take these results into account if and when they update their screening guidelines. For MedPage Today, I'm Christina Fiore.